good day, everyone, and I hope they're safe and healthy. For this week's lesson, we're going to discuss about compelling oral presentation. This is a very essential topic, most especially that after you're done with the research proposal, or maybe you're done with your thesis, you'll be defending your paper in front of a panel or in front of your thesis advisor, your panel members, or maybe your professor and your classmates. It's also applicable if you're going to report on a certain topic in class. But before we proceed, I have a profound question. And that is, have you ever experienced a very boring, lifeless, and frustrating presentation? Hmm. Your answers are interesting. So, how do we make our presentations powerful? Find the answers as we go along. So come and let's learn. The objectives for this lesson are compose a speech, deliver a speech employing the ethics of public speaking, create a visual presentation for the discipline based research, and present a discipline based research in a virtual research colloquium. Let's begin with how do you prepare for your speech presentation? Let's take a look at the video. You can start by organizing your major speech points and practicing your speech. I will prepare by reviewing my research and calm myself down. Identify your problems and be interesting. Understand your topic and organizing your thoughts are the keys to a prepared presentation. Also, being logical and constantly rehearsing will help for an effective delivery. Brainstorming and establishing the main topic should be done first, as well as keeping into mind the proper structure for your speech. In preparation, I usually define my audience first so that I'll be able to organize my speech in a manner that is suitable for them. And I practice a lot so that I'll be able to speak naturally in front of the audience. Practice your speech a few weeks ahead of the actual presentation. You can record yourself and see how fast or slow you are speaking. Watch your body language and how you use your hands to address your audience. Just practice and keep practicing until you are comfortable and confident with your speech. Organize things such as a planned outline are essential in preparing for speech presentation because this will help you know what to do next in accordance with the design structure. There are many ways on how to prepare for your speech presentation and these are the things that you have to remember. One here is you have to plan. At the same time, you need to strategize. What do you mean by strategize? You have to think of what's the best introduction, what's the best body, how are you going to sustain your audience's interest, and then how are you going to conclude your presentation. Those things are very relevant for your presentation. So take note, you have to strategize. Another one here is you have to create a concept. If your topic is all about electrical engineering and then specifically underground cabling, look for something that will represent underground cabling. If your topic is all about malnutrition, then you have to portray their malnutrition. If your topic is all about animals, then you have to show there that your topic is all about animals. And then if your topic is all about vocabulary, then the picture, the graphics, the design should show that your topic is all about vocabulary. Just like in my presentation, since I'm talking about compelling oral presentations, you can see there that there are photos of, let's say, a person presenting, the microphone, the spotlight, and so on. So that's how you create a concept. Another one here is you have to practice. Just like the best swimmer, the best basketball player, the best volleyball player, the best singer, the best dancer, the best public speaker, they actually practice and you are not accepted. All right. Another one here is you vocal. If you say vocalize, you try to and then the vowel sounds ah, e, u, o, u, in exaggerated manner such that your jaw lines would be practiced and that your presentation would go smoothly. And before you present, try to say hello, good morning, hello, 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 good day, everyone. So you have to vocalize the best voice that you can produce. Another one here is 
you have to create a lasting impact. It's just like joining a beauty pageant, there is this 10% audience impact. And when I say audience impact, it doesn't mean the person who got the loudest applause. It refers to how you relate to your audience. So that's your impact. Okay. Another one here is the ethics of public speaking. So just like writing and listening, there's also this ethic if you are going to present your speech in front of an audience. And let's take a look. The first one here is honesty. You have to be honest with your presentation. Let's say you have to present facts, figures, and so on. But take note, do not apologize. Let's say, I'm sorry guys, I'm not prepared. I'm sorry guys, we're able to do like this, to do like that. Take note guys, in public speaking, apologies are not welcome, okay? You should not apologize. So what you have to remember is fake it till you make it. And that's what I remember from again. Another one here is plagiarism. For you to avoid plagiarism, you have to paraphrase. And take note, paraphrasing is not enough. You have to use in-text citation. And take note, writing and speaking are two different things. Here, since it's speaking, you have to cite the family name, the year, and then what is the idea of this particular author. You cannot mention the author's name and the year at the last portion. So it's different. Take note in speaking. Another one is diversity. Take note, your audience come from diverse backgrounds, come from diverse educational background, age, gender, sex, and so on. What you have to do here is make your presentation conversational such that everyone will be welcome. Everyone is accepted. And talking about diversity, you have to be inclusive. So since you have a diverse audience, you have to be inclusive. And you say inclusive, make use of first personal pronouns like I, B, R, such that your audience are like considered part of your presentation. Another one here is make use of gender fair language. So avoid using sexist language like chairman, policeman, and many others. So make use of chair, police, and so on. Another one is social awareness. Take note, your research is the solution or the intervention of the problems of your community. So in that case, you are promoting this advocacy. And then in public speaking, take note of these three systems. Okay, the first one here is ethos. If you say ethos, that refers to credibility. Maybe you notice that if you say there are programs like graduation, recognition, conference, symposia, seminar, they invite the best speakers in town with the best credentials. For example, our guest speaker for today is a graduate of blah, 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 blah. So that builds up the initial credibility. Sometimes, guys, this initial credibility is not sustained. For example, you will experience... Even though that speaker is a graduate of a world-renowned university. Because sometimes, even though they are experts in their field, however, they are not good when it comes to presentation and there are also cases where in this particular person is not that brilliant but this particular person knows how to speak them that's a different thing another one here is pathos your pathos here refers to your emotional appeal have you experienced watching a horror film and then you are not scared at all or maybe have you experienced watching a drama series or maybe a drama movie however you did not cry or maybe a romantic film, and then you did not feel any kinig at all. In that case, those movies fail this particular concept of pathos. So there should be this emotional appeal, emotional impact to your audience. And the last one here is your logos or your logical sequence. So in that case, you have to arrange your speech from the very beginning, the middle, and the end. So everything should be connected. Right. Let's proceed now to overcoming public speaking anxiety. So the question now is, how do you overcome public speaking anxiety? Let's take a look at the videos. Practice speaking to your family. Master your speech topic to be confident in talking. I review ahead and organize my thoughts so that I will be confident and not tremble. 
I get into a groove and it usually dissipates. Acceptance. Making yourself aware of your fears will help in generating an effective way of making yourself more grounded and calmer. One way to overcome this type of anxiety is to visualize that your audience is interested and will be reacting positively. From time to time, I get myself to practice in front of people so that I get used to it because it is essential to always be well prepared and well rehearsed to feel confident. Practice your presentation several times. You can also do it in front of some people that you are comfortable with and ask for feedback. Focus on what you are doing. Don't think about the audience and be confident that you are killing the game. Recite your entire presentation a few other times. Do it for a few people you trust and ask for critique. Or consider creating a video of yourself presenting so you can review it and see where you can improve. Alright, there are many ways on how to overcome anxiety. Let's take a look. First one here is superstitions. Have you experienced putting a coin inside your sock? Or maybe wearing your lucky t-shirt, your lucky underwear, or lucky anything? Because you're thinking that if you're going to wear this and that, you'd become successful. In psychology, that's what we call placebo effect. That's actually possible. But take note, as long as you're confident, even though you're not wearing this and you're not wearing that, as long as you're confident, then your presentation would run smoothly. Another one here is practice. Take note, even the best athletes, Dancers and singers practice, and you are not exempt. Another one is you try to videograph yourself. Let's say, since you have your laptops or maybe your mobile phones, try to videograph yourself and then try to see your mannerisms. So try to look at your forehead, your eyebrows, your eyes, your mouth, how do you look, so that you'll be able to tweak your presentation. Another one here is speaking body. If you have a speaking body, then you have someone who would critique your presentation and then you have to consider those criticisms and then the last one here is proper breathing so if you say proper breathing you have to inhale slowly through your nose in five seconds and then try to exhale slowly through your mouth and then do it many times inhale exhale because it eases your nervousness or your anxiety. All right, let's proceed now to commencing a speech. The question now is, based on experience, what is the best strategy for you to begin a speech and why? Let's take a look at the videos. For me, it is asking the audience how they are feeling, so I can gain their attention and they can hear me out. Start your speech with a smile and attract your listeners' attention. Start with the hook so that it will grab the audience's attention. For me, a powerful statement to begin a speech is the best way to catch the listener's attention while setting the tone of your speech. I find that complimenting the audience first leads to a much better presentation for everybody as it relieves tension in the room. For me, starting it with great enthusiasm is the best way to hook up with your audience. And also, following it with small talks would be very great in making a connection with your audience. You must greet your audience and you can even insert small jokes to make sure that your audience is responsive and are listening. I would begin a speech with a what-if scenarios that, so that I would pique their interest and they would try to listen to the end. Stand confidently and make eye contact to your audience before speaking. In this manner, your audience will be interested in what you're about to say. Guys, there are many ways on how to kill a cat. And there are many ways on how to begin a speech. And let's take a look at some of the techniques. One here is the problem. Since you're dealing with research, you have to highlight your problem because your problem would stand as your ground. Okay, such that you would have a basis. Why is it that you conducted this research? Because there is a problem. Another one here is statistics. For example, you would say 80% of women are like this, 90% of men are like this. So you're actually engaging the attention of your audience because you're providing these statistics. Another one is quotation, and that's actually effective, okay, to so make use of quotations. Another one, by the way, is a rhetorical question. You ask thought-provoking questions to your audience. I don't know if you noticed, but my presentations I ask questions such that you would answer them silently and then as 
the presentation goes, you'll be able to say, oh, okay. All right. Let's proceed now to how do you sustain your audience's interest. Let's take a look at the videos. You can sustain it by organizing your speech excitingly and appealing. In this way, they will not get bored. Make sure your voice is loud and make your presentation interesting. I usually inject some humor into my work or my speech. Throughout the whole presentation, applying cognitive dissonance will help in persuading your audience by constantly presenting contradicting facts. The easiest way is to maintain eye contact with the audience individually and not by scanning past them. You should be talking about something your audience is interested in. It is also good to go off script and tell fun stories or examples that will light up the mood of the audience. Use proper intonation when speaking so that you will not bore out your listeners. Some parts of your presentation are more compelling than others, so it is more important to properly deliver your speech to accentuate those differences. By setting up jokes and interacting with the audience. Make a short but concise statement and anything your audience is interested in or things that are inclined in your topic that are interesting to both parties, the listener and the speaker. I took this information from the Coursera class of Dr. Ivan Ruiz from the University of Toronto and the name of his class is Communication for a Virtual Age. And let's take a look. The first one here is a 5% rule. It's a 5% rule. Based on your presentation, your audience would only remember 5% or maybe one sentence from your presentation. And that is the most challenging part because People or your audience have a short attention span. So take note, make the most of it. Another one here is Area 47. Take note, if you say Area 47, you need to create this mystery effect. You ask thought provoking questions, rhetorical questions. For example, you would ask your audience, raise your hand if it's your first time to drink water. Then your audience would think, um, excuse me, why are you asking me that question? Or excuse me, why are you asking us that particular question? The presenter there is presenting about water filters. In that case, the presenter is able to get the attention of the audience. So that's area 47. Another one here is goal opportunity statement. Your, your goal opportunity statement is a sentence. Take note, one sentence that summarizes your presentation. So take note, make that count. Another one is no phrase. If you say no phrase, that is your slogan. Jollibee has this, be the answer ya. Bakdo has this, love koko. Video, we find ways. In your presentation, you also have to phrase a slogan such that this slogan would be used in your presentation and then you're going to repeat it as you transition from one information to the next, such that this particular slogan would be instilled in the mind of your audience. Another one here is this one. Take a look at the photo. Who do you think dominates the conversation? So take note, it's a person who points and who is angry with, you know, fiery something on his head. The ones that being dominated is a person who clasps his hand like this. Guys, it's also true in presentation. So that's why during your presentation, do not put your hands together like this or maybe you're like joining a choir, no. Another one is maybe you put your hands inside your pockets. That's also a no-no. What you have to do is do this. Do the belly button rule, okay? But take note, do not do this because this is very distracting, for example, uh, um, that's very distracting. So just show your belly button. In that case, you're actually making a variety of your body language. Another one here is silence. You can make this in three seconds. But do not exceed that particular three second rule because your audience would... Oh no, what happened to our speaker? Our speaker is lost, my goodness. So take note, guys. Make use of this silent rule wisely. The question now is, did you ever bother read all the numbers? 
The answer there is no. And that's what you call the lazy room. Another example, and this is very common during class presentations. Let's take a look. Do you think your audience would be interested to read this particular slide? It's very lengthy. It has a lot of information. So the antidote here is try to look for keywords like this. So in that case, you're able to summarize. But is it enough? Let's try to narrow these information further. So in that case, from the lengthy sentences, from the lengthy phrases, you're able to come up with this. So multicultural, Cebuano language, English and Filipino. Another one is, can you narrow this information further? That's also possible. Let's take a look. All right. So you have there, becoming multilingual. So in that case, what you have to do is just put those words in your slide and then explain what you mean by becoming multilingual. You are not reading anymore your presentation. At the same time, you're engaging your audience's interest. Another one here is it's also possible that the presenters would read the slide. Let's say, with the multicultural nature of barangay, blah, 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 blah. Take note, guys, we know how to get rid of this particular thing. That's what you call the lazy room. Another one here is the picture superiority effect. As they say, picture paints a thousand words. Let's take a look at two photos. The topic here is Filipino workers. The first one here is very obvious, but here you can find a very perfect representation of the Philippine map showing the different professions of different Filipinos. You see, that's more interesting. Okay. Take note, picture superiority effect. Another one here is how are you going to conclude your speech? And there are many ways on how to conclude your speech. Let's take a look. I thank them for their time and how I am delighted to be there. I do this because it is morally right and straightforward. Always end your speech with a smile and a thank you. I tend to end my speech with something that relates to my audience. A call to action is an effective way to end a speech as this concludes the statement you've provided in your opening. I find that the best way to end a speech is by a short, memorable sentence, preferably one that rhymes. I think summarizing the whole idea of your speech, leaving some nice words or quotations, and making it clear that you are done is the best way to end a speech. You must end your speech with a summary and close it with inspiration, and that will make them applaud. Well, I usually thank the audience for participating and ending it with a strong quotation. The best strategy to end a speech is to leave a lasting impression that even after your presentation, your audience is still hooked up either by a powerful quotation or a challenge. Alright, let's try to see what are the best way on how to conclude a speech. One here is you can pose a challenge. You can challenge your audience. You can ask a question to challenge them. Aside from challenging your audience, you can pair it with this one, call to action. So since there is a problem, so you have to engage your audience to action. And another one here is provide recommendations. So those are a few of the things. And then you can also make use of quotation. And then another one here is visual presentation applications. So what are the visual presentation applications that you usually employ? Let's take a look. I commonly use Canva since it is easy to use and gives good visuals. Microsoft PowerPoint because I am already used with the tools and it is what I use during my high school years. I usually use Canva or PowerPoint since both applications express creativity. I often use Canva as its premium features are accessible with the use of our institutional email. It also provides templates that can fit to my liking. MS PowerPoint as it has been the most convenient and easiest for me to operate. I have always been using Microsoft PowerPoint in most of my presentations. Well, not only because it is popular to use, but using PowerPoint in presenting allows you to use images, audio, and video to have greater visual impact. Microsoft PowerPoint is the most commonly used application in presentations because of its easy access and edit tools. 
Microsoft PowerPoint because I've been using it ever since and it is usually much easier to use than the other applications. I usually employ Microsoft PowerPoint because it is much more convenient than others since I can access it anytime and anywhere without the need of an internet connection which gives me the capability to experiment and somehow unleash creativity. Here you can make use of the following presentation applications like Microsoft PowerPoint, Google Slides, Canva, Keynote if you're using Mac, and then Prezi. Or if you know of anything that's not in the list, then you can also do that. And then the visual presentation guidelines. So what should you do? Number one here is take note. You have to create a template. Have a concept. Another one here is make your presentation readable. And then another one is uniformity. As you can see, the slides that I have are uniform. Another one here is you can make use of graphics to make your presentation more appealing. Another one is less is more. So make use of the lazy rule. Take note, your audience would not read your slides. Instead, they would listen. And at the same time, you have to make use of the area 47 such that they would be engaged in your presentation. And the last one here is the oral presentation guide. So what should you remember are the following. Number one here is be brief. Your presentation should be five minutes only. That's the maximum. Another one here is be confident. Okay, so take note if you are anxious, do the breathing exercise and practice. Always remember, if you're about to stutter, pause. Try to overcome that. Another one here is gain mastery of your presentation. Take note, do not read from your notes. Do not read from the slides. Instead, speak in a conversational manner and they will not feel bored during the presentation. I'm going to show you the slides that I used during the research, development, and extension evaluation at our university. As you can see, you can find there the title slide, including my name and some relevant information. And then another one here is Okay, provide a summary of slides such that your audience would be guided what are the different contents in your presentation. Another one here is the rationale. So in that case, I make use of words only. Okay, So do not put definitions like that. Put information only. Okay, And then this one is the establishing a niche. So a few studies and then why narratives, something like that. And then objectives. Okay. So in your objectives, you cannot trim down actually the objectives. What you can do here is you have to bolden the relevant words. Okay. For example, I bolden the why, Manabu people, trans languaging, social identity, social relationships. Those are a few of the significant information that the audience should know. Alright. Next, methodology, respondents, sampling, data gathering procedure, method of analysis. Another one here is the findings. So, for example, explain there what is becoming multilingual, Cebuano trans languaging, accent and intonation, creation and maintenance. Just explain them as you go through the presentation. And then, conclusions, explain what is this, what is that, like that. And then, you're done with your presentation preparing your spills and slides and presenting your paper in front of a huge audience are challenging but you can make it as long as you have a formidable script. If you got questions regarding this lesson or you got queries of any concern, drop an email at f.rene.budifasha at cmu.edu.ph. I'll attend to your queries as fast as I can. As always, God bless and stay healthy.